Someone Better by I underslash am underslash Ellie. Episode 33, Chapter 26, Never Be the Same. Hisashi went back to physical therapy willingly after that, and although he sometimes seemed to be low-spirited, his mood wasn't nearly as horrid as it had been. He was beginning to learn sign language as a form of communication, and Isuku and Shoto were picking up lessons when they could as well. It didn't take long for Isashi's doctor to fit him with a pair of hearing aids, that thanks to their insurance, thankfully, blessedly, didn't put too much of a dent into their bank account. Hisashi was soon cleared to go back to work at the radio show, though he still wasn't permitted to go back to hero work. His physical therapist said he's had to get new headgear to accommodate his condition. The whole thing was a legal frustrating process, but Hisashi seemed to be pushing through. Shoji transferred the money directly into Shoda's bank account after a few weeks, and the amount of zeros his bank had increased had given him a head rush. It had been enough for him to pay off much of the debt from Inko's funeral, and he knew, should he be accepting the new job from Nezu, which he was admittedly seriously considering, and got back to patrolling every night, it wouldn't take long to get their affairs in order. Not to mention he had enough extra money now to set aside more for Izuku's college fund and therapist. Things were beginning to look up. Hisashi and Shoda had gone to the doctor's office to pick up Hisashi's hearing aids, which Hisashi had opened and slipped over his ears eagerly upon being given to them. The doctor had adjusted the volume of them and had explained how they work and what to expect. Hisashi and Shoda had been sent on their way. It's weird. Hisashi had lambered on once they reached a car. It's so weird. Shota frowned. How so? It's like, before, high and tiny sounds were really hard to hear, right? And soft sounds were practically non-existent? It was like, if I listened to an orchestra, I could probably only be able to hear the drums and brass well, but not the clarinets and flutes and saxophones. But now, certain noises are, like, the cars in the street are really loud, and the high noises are higher, and it's like, patterns are kind of different? It's like it takes me a moment to process and figure out something is once I hear it. It's just odd. Not to mention my ears are still ringing a lot. That didn't stop. Well, the doctor said that you'll have to get used to it. Shota murmured, trying to find an opening between the line of cars to turn into the busy street. He hated rush hour traffic. And I'm not sure if hearing aids will help your tinnitus. It's all she hummed, sinking down slightly in a seat, and Shota had to stop himself from rolling his eyes at his boyfriend's. No. Beyonce's dramatics. So, it's all she drawled. Winter break is coming up. Shota sighed heavily resigned to the conversation ahead of him. That it is, Shota said. Izuku would be out of school, Hisashi added. Indeed. I also happen to remember a certain job opening that becomes available after winter break. Do you remember that? Unfortunately. Well, I know that I'm gonna take it, Hisashi continued. Hey, constant hours. I'm fluent in English, so it'll be something I'm good at. Decent pay, too, if Nezu can't be trusted. Feeling pretty good about this. Mm-hmm. Shota turned down another crowded street. He could just barely see their apartment building. Get to work with my best friend. Get to teach the next generation. Feels good. Is there a point to this, Asashi? Shota asked, because there always was. Actually, yes. Of course. I was just wondering if you were going to accept it. The job, I mean. Shota grimmed. Hey, no pressure, Hisashi cried. It's just, you know, deadlines. I'm sure, Shota said dryly. So, are you? I don't know yet. Maybe. Shota admitted with a sigh. Probably. I pay as well, and working under Nezu doesn't sound... Horrible. 
In all actuality, working under the odd rat-like creature was terrifying on many levels. But Shota was sure that he was at least a fair boss. And filing a few papers and taking absent notes didn't sound too horrible. That's the spirit! Hisashi cheered. Shota raised an eyebrow. You're cheerful, Shota noted. His voice was even and slightly sardonic, even though he was pleased by this. Cheerful Hisashi could handle. He preferred cheerful Hisashi. I'm allowed to be cheerful, Hisashi exclaimed. I'm engaged, and I finally got my hearing aids. What's there not to be cheerful over? Shota could name any number of things not to be cheerful over, but he refrained. We should get rings, Hisashi said, and it was so random it almost gave Shota whiplash. What? Rings, Hisashi repeated. We should get rings. I didn't give you a ring when I proposed, so we should go and get rings. Shota could tell he was staring at him, but it was hard not to. Now? Why not? Hisashi said with a shrug of his shoulders. Best time as any, I think. Kids at school, we've got nothing better to do. Why not? But why? Shota resolutely closed his mouth and took a deep breath to stop his stammering. With what money? Where? We just got paid by Shoji. We can afford to splurge a little. And as for where, his lies lit up. They sell jewelry at the supermarket. We're not getting our engagement rings at the supermarket. But no. Isashi pouted. Fine. There's that place in the next town over, where all the thrift stores are at. They're bound to have something. The 45-minute drive, which was significantly lengthened thanks to the rush hour traffic, led them to a small, privately owned jewelry store. Shoda could see a petite aged woman whoring about in the shop, through the window, adjusting display cases and dusting. There were necklaces and bracelets on velvety purple pillows, sitting directly behind the window, polished and gleaming. Upon stepping into the store, the old woman smiled warmly and walked over to them. She was still holding the feather duster, and she had several gleaming silver rings adorning her fingers as well as chain after chain of necklaces clasped to her neck. Shoda was sure that the woman was wearing at least 20 pounds of jewelry. The whole store smelled heavy of perfume and incense, and it made Shoda's head ache. Welcome, she said cheerfully. What can I do to help you handsome young gentlemen? Shoda could feel his ears go red, but Asashi grinned at the woman jovially. My name's Hisashi, and this is my fiancé, Shoda, Hisashi said. We just got engaged recently, and we're here to get our rings. The woman smiled kindly, clasping her hands in excitement. The ring on her fingers went clink, clink, clink every time they hit each other. It was more granting than it should have been. Oh, of course, the woman cried. Hmm, well, there are some rings in display cases right over there, What's your price range? We're trying not to think about that too much, is all she said, grin becoming a bit fixed in place. Just show us what's nice. Of course, the woman said. She guided Isashi over to the display case with a hand on his elbow and showed to follow them behind, feeling a bit dazed. All the perfume was making him dizzy. So, the little old lady said, pointing at the rings. Your options are gold, silver, and platinum bands. And we have various of different stones and options for engravements, if you wish. I made these rings myself, you know. Oh, really? Isashi asked, cheerfully, examining a ring in the display case. You don't say? Oh, yes, the woman said, nodding proudly. It's all because of my quirk. I can buy the metal and mold it into any shape I want. It makes it very easy to make jewelry. I imagine so, Hisashi said. He glanced back at Shoda, who was standing a foot or so behind Hisashi and the little old woman, before pointing a ring to her. The woman nodded, smiling at him. Would you like to pick out a ring, dear? The woman called back to Shoda, and Shoda nodded, stepping forward. Hisashi stepped aside, so he'd give him room. There were a lot of options. 
The silver bands were mainly twisted into little patterns and engraved with small designs. The gold rings were shiny and most of them inlaid with diamonds. And Shoda determinedly looked away from those. One wing in particular caught his eye. One of the platinum ones. The band itself was a bit thicker than the other ones. And there was a small ruby island right in the middle, surrounded by what appeared to be blooming flower design. He thought he liked it. He thought his sashi would wear it, assuming he was picking out a ring for his sashi and not himself. The ring was certainly beautiful. The woman had done an amazing job at making it. He pointed it out to the woman, and she grinned. Great choice, honey. She opened the display case with a small silver key and flicked her wrist, the two rings shooting towards her, which she then boxed and bagged, ringing up the price. It was speedy and efficient, if a bit unnerving. Congrats on your wedding, dearies, the woman said after Shoda had handed her the debit card, trying not to think too much about the price. They traded rings once they got into the car, Isashi taking the ring Shoda had picked out, and Shoda taking Isashi's. The ring Isashi had chosen was one of the golden ones. Six strands were woven together into a twisting pattern, complementing the little vein-like engraving in the metal, and along each strand, a small, deep green emerald stark against the gold. The metal was thick, but it wasn't heavy on his finger, and despite the metal being cold at first, it warmed up quickly. Hisashi was grinning down at his own ring, twisting it around in his finger so he could presumably look at it from all angles. That was a lot of money, Shoda noted. Definitely, Hisashi agreed. Totally worth it. And despite everything, Shoda couldn't help but agree. Isashi drove to get Izuku that day, and after the child had finished his chores and his homework, they all curled up onto the couch so they could watch a movie before dinner. Takara had climbed up and immediately fallen asleep on the back of the couch, purring loudly, and Akio had jumped up and started nestling into Izuku's lap with a bark. They decided to watch Finding Nemo that night, and after midway through the movie, Shota spending more time actually enjoying sitting down and relaxing for once than actually watching the film, he felt a small hand grab his wrist, Mizuku playing with the ring on his finger, a glint of curiosity in his green eyes. Shota was, and always had been, iffy about people touching him. He liked hugs fine, he liked cuddling with Asashi. Before, while they'd still been at UA, they used to watch movies together at each other's house all the time, and Shota would lay down in the middle of the couch with his head in Namuri's lap and his feet in Asashi's. And Amari would run her hand through his hair and Asashi would rub a hand up and down his calf. And it was nice. He liked physical contact. If he initiated it, he liked it. But there were some things that he didn't like. He didn't like soft touches. It made his skin feel weird and tingly and wrong. He didn't like anyone tugging at his hair. He did hair brushes and hairstylists especially. He didn't like unwelcome touches. It would make him overwhelm and stress and panicky more than anything. That especially made his life very difficult. Not to mention that when people he didn't know well touched him, he always tensed up. Even if it wasn't bad, it always set him on the edge. Even with Izuku, much as he hated it, there was always something off-putting about a small child that Shota could never pinpoint. Izuku had learned a long time ago that he shouldn't do certain things. If Shota said not to touch him, don't touch him. No soft touches. Only big touches, as Asashi liked to call them. And the child had learned quickly what made Shota comfortable and uncomfortable, and life carried on. Izuku had his hand in Shota's, toying with the ring and playing with his fingers as he looked far younger than he had run before. And Shota hadn't tensed up. He looked down at the child, toying with the ring like he's never seen one before and he hadn't tested up one bit. He was every bit as relaxed as he had been before. Maybe he was getting more comfortable around the child than he had originally thought. What's this? Izuku asked quietly. It was always quiet when a movie was playing. That was one of the rules they had made. Movie time was quiet time. Inside voice, Izuku. Whisper, Izuku. A ring. Shota answered. Why did you get a ring? Izuku inquired. It's pretty. Isashi paused the movie, looking over at the two with a look on his face like, 
how are you going to deal with this? It is a wedding band. Do you know what it is? Um, is it his eyebrows? Pinched together. Pounding. Um, people on the television wear it when they're about to get married, right? Exactly. Shota confirmed. Good job, child. Isika grinned. Wait, if it's for people who are about to get married, then why are you wearing it? Isiko asked, looking confused. Beside him, Isashi snorted. Your Uncle Sashi is wearing one too. Shota said. Isiko looked over to Isashi and his eyes widened. He is, you're right. What do you think that means, Izuku? Izuku shrugged. Isashi's shoulders were trembling with barely suppressed laughter. We have wedding rings. Both have them. What do you think that means? Izuku shrugged. I don't get it. Isashi weaseled. Shota hoped the universe would give him patience. Izuku. Shota said. Use your brain. I am using my brain. Use it a little more. Hisashi and I both have wedding rings. What does that usually mean? Izuku looked like he was completely and utterly lost. For a moment. Before his face lit up, eyes widening dramatic. Oh! Hisashi was bent almost double on the couch, tears streaming from his eyes and clutching his sides as he laughed radically. <laughs> Izu, baby, Sue, oh my god. Izuku whacked him on shaking shoulders, but because of his small stature, it wasn't very effective. If anything, it only made Asashi laugh harder. Mean, Izuku demolished. Oh, Izuku, I'm sorry, baby, I just... <laughs> Izuku stuck his tongue out at the man prolifically. No, child, Shota said. Tongues in faces. Izuku drew his tongue with an even more pronounced pout before turning to Shota, quizzically. Wait, but... But you said you were too young to get married. When I met you, you said that. Why'd you go and do it anyways? Things change. Izuku seemed to accept this answer, and went back to toying with the ring on Shota's finger. He seemed to like Shota's more than he liked Hisashi's. Hisashi always had better sense picking out things like these anyhow. Does that mean you gotta do a wedding? Izuku asked, not looking up from the golden ring. Like in the American movies, with the pretty dresses and the suits and stuff? My mommy and daddy had a wedding before I appeared, but they didn't wear pretty suits and dresses. They wear kimonos. Are you gonna wear kimonos? We haven't even decided if we're gonna have a wedding child. Shota said. We haven't? Hisashi asked, slowly unbending himself from his folding over position on the couch. His face was still red and tear stained from his laughter, and his hair was a mess strands of it slipping out of his bun and into his face. I thought that was pretty much a given. Unless you want to just go to the courthouse and we have it done that way, it's up to you. Shota blinked. I never said that, Shota said, even though the thought of a wedding, especially his own, made him feel a bit queasy. There had been quite a few people at his sister's wedding, but maybe she just knew a lot of people. I just thought we hadn't Discussed it yet. That's all. I think a wedding would be a good idea. Hisashi grinned. Might be nice. Izuku could be the ring bearer. He could get one of his little friends to be the flower girl, huh? Might be fun. And Hisashi looked so happy. So excited. And Shadow wouldn't have been able to say no if he wanted to. Yes, okay. As Shota said, trailing off slightly, already thinking about how much money that would cost. There was no rule that they had to get married right away. They could wait until they got everything in order. A lot of people did that. They could just wait, however long it took. And they should have enough put away after they got back to work. It might work out. If Shota accepted the position at UA. Shota felt like ripping his own hair out, mind going back to that dreaded topic. The job application. The job application he still couldn't make a decision over, despite its very obvious positive outlook. He just wanted a chance to think over it. Think over all his options. Even if that was his best option he had. He never seemed to have time to just think. Hisashi and Izuku were talking excitedly about all the weddings Izuku had seen on television, 
and how he thought they should have a fog machine at their wedding, which, no, and Shota tried and failed to keep his thoughts from wandering too far. Weddings, job, Izuku, planning and changing, everything shifting around in Shota's life to make room for the next catastrophe while the world keeps spinning. Spinning around and around and around. Sometimes Shota wished the world could just stop spinning, just for a moment, just to give him time to think, to ponder, to gather his wits and organize his mind into one little box instead of a scattered mess long enough for him to think. He just wanted time to think. He went to bed later that night, curled up next to Isashi, still trying to think. Alright, before you guys get um, sad that it ended, because it did, I know it says up there 26 out of 26. Do not worry. It does not end it. I haven't even finished chapter 26. And even when I finish chapter 26, there's going to be a second part. So this is someone better, and the second part is going to be somewhere better. So, stay tuned for that one. That one only has 21 chapters, so uh, at most you're going to get 20 more, uh, 21 more, um, what's it called? Um, episodes, probably a little less than that. Um, so stay tuned for that. That's coming along. That's happening. Do not worry. It's not ending. I know, I know some of you are probably like, no, it's ended. Don't worry. We're not even finished with chapter 26. I'm cutting it up and breaking it up into pieces because it is quite a lengthy one. Um, not as lengthy as, uh, what's it called? Happy birthday was, or the first episode was like, those are, ooh, those are lengthy. Like some of these I had to cut either because I decided to cut them uh, or for example, um, I think what I said for this one, I think this is the second time I, I came back into it. As I said, Mother's Day happened and I had to cut it. I probably would have been able to do this in two bits, um, if I could have, but no. Uh, I like my sanity, please and thank you. And with my schedule, it's just easier to do 20 minute videos than 40, 50 minute videos. So, sorry. Sorry guys, that's not happening. <laughs> but... I want to talk a little bit. They got their wedding rings. We got it nice. I mean, I, I don't have any predictions um, or any psychology. Oh, no. Yes, I have psychology. Psychology. So, um, it's less of a psychology corner and more of I want to talk about my psychology, my little brain. Do you guys, do you guys have that uh, itch in your brain of like, I just want the world to hit on pause and I just do nothing. Think of nothing, do nothing, have no worries, no nothing. Nada. Nothing. Right? Or maybe just hit pause and be able to just read a fan fiction or watch a show and be able to do that without having to worry about time moving forward and you wasting your time. Because that's the thing about me. I I have my day managed sometimes and it's, it's to the point where it, it gets exhausting. It's like I'm so preoccupied about the time and I'm constantly checking it. I'm like, Fuck, it's too late. Fuck, it's too late. Fuck, it's too late. Like, for example, right now, it's 10.30 in the night, and I'm still thinking, fuck, I wanted to record more, but I can't record more. The day just kind of flew by. Um, mainly because I went to the store and I bought Storm some more litter, which, by the way, motherfucker loves that fucking litter. I swear to God, every time I buy a new bag, motherfucker starts meowing, starts purring, starts rubbing against the fucking litter. I don't, I don't fucking know. Mans, mans love it man's fucking loves it <laughs> i remember we used to give him the different type of litter and fucking bitch hated it he hated it he threw tantrums and by tantrums i mean he would throw the litter everywhere everywhere and not with this litter the litter that he likes he he's i've seen him use the litter box when he's using the litter he likes and then when litter he doesn't like holy fucking christ it looks like he's angry at the litter. Like he starts throwing it around and then he walks away, right? But when it's his litter that he likes, he gently like, you know, covers up uh, his doings. He gently covers it up and then just walks away and is all happy and he doesn't throw as much litter. I'm gonna be honest. The, the reason why there's litter on the floor is it's me. I'm the problem, right? It's cause when I'm picking up his uh, stuff, I, I'm the one who accidentally drops litter as I'm scooping and stuff. Right? And then I'm the one who has to clean it up afterwards as well. But he doesn't throw litter. Right? He's gentle. Mother motherfucker likes that litter. Alright? Um, then again, it's also the first litter we ever got him as a kitten. So, he's probably just attached to that. Uh, I mean, we didn't get him that young. So, by the time we got him, he was able to do um, litters that weren't uh, clumping litters. 
In the end, we didn't get him a clumping litter. That's not clumping litter. I thought it was clumping, clumping litter when we got it. Turns out it wasn't. It wasn't clumping litter. And um, at first I was like, oh, it's more work. It's like, no, I like that litter. Um, but uh, apart from that, I also got him new traits, which motherfuckers go crazy over. Um, and we took him to the vet. He he didn't like that. He didn't like the vet. We're, we're, gonna, we're also gonna cut off his balls. Yeah, we're gonna neuter him. Not soon. I'm gonna do some investigating work and see what clinic here is the best, what serves the best. Um, uh, I don't care how much it costs. I just want to see what is best for him because I care about him. But moving on, um, I just sometimes I wish I could just stop <laughs> and not have to think about that. Uh, being an adult sucks. <laughs> I'm complaining and I haven't have to do taxes yet. Ugh, but that's something that's coming up and that's gonna be fucking forever. And there's all other stuff that I'm just worried about and, you know, sometimes I just wish we could hit pause. But, wedding. I don't know if there's ever is a wedding. I don't know. Hold up. I'm gonna check out what chapter I left off. Because I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't even halfway when I stopped reading the second part. So at one point we're gonna reach the second part where I haven't read it yet. Um, I ended in, yeah, chapter 12. I didn't read chapter 12. I ended in chapter, uh, 11. Um, so, let's just say that that area is gonna start becoming a little, um, unknown to me. You know, it's gonna be an unknown territory. And you guys are gonna hear my predictions. And genuine reactions and stuff, so. Yeah. Anyways, as always, my rain drops. Make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds. Have a wonderful day or night. Link to my Discord server and socials are down in the description. Subscribe to see more of my content, and thank you so much for watching.